The LA Nature Map is a project that was started by the Natural History Museum and it is a way for us to explore and document the nature that lives here in Los Angeles and it encompasses a lot of our individual community science projects that the museum has started. You know, you think of nature maybe as being in natural preserves and beautiful places like where we are right now, the Bayona wetlands, but actually nature exists all around. Southern California is such an incredibly diverse area. You know, we've got the ocean, we've got coasts, we've got deserts, we've got mountains, we've got marshes. There are just so many different habitats in such a, a small area. That means that we can ask some really interesting questions and look at how um, wildlife and different species are kind of associated with these different habitats and how they're changing as the world changes too. And so we're calling on you, community scientists of LA, to help us fill in where are these species and what species are found throughout the LA area. The broad questions that we're asking at the museum through community science is mostly about what lives where or how things live where. So we're interested in where animals and plants are or are not making it in Los Angeles, but also how they're interacting with the world around them and with this urban environment. The project that I am most interested in is the Southern California Squirrel Survey. And this is a fun project that is documenting where squirrels are found in Los Angeles County, both the native species and the species that have been introduced here. There's roughly a dozen, give or take, species of squirrels in the area, and they live everywhere from the deserts and from the coast all the way up to the tops of the mountains. And what a lot of people don't know about squirrels is that includes everything from the tree squirrels, which is what most people probably think about when they're thinking about a squirrel, also includes chipmunks. And we have the California ground squirrels, which are seen in a lot of urban developed places. But then we also have the flying squirrels. So that's our one nocturnal squirrel that only comes out at night, doesn't truly fly, it glides around. But that's another one that's really exciting to observe in Southern California and Los Angeles. The Southern California Squirrel Survey is an opportunity for the community to partner with the Natural History Museum scientists and educators to look for squirrels throughout Southern California. And they use smartphones, they use an app called the iNaturalist app, which allows community members to take a photo of a squirrel and help map their distribution throughout the Southern California area. The app grabs the location, time, and date of the photo and turns it into a data point uh, for scientists like myself. SLIME stands for Snails and Slugs Living in Metropolitan Environments, S-L-I-M-E. The SLIME project's main goals are to find out where snails and slugs live in the city of Los Angeles and Southern California generally and find out where they're moving. So if we know that they're here one year, where have they moved in the next year or, or beyond? So we wanna know what species are here, where they are, and are there new um, introduced species that are in Los Angeles that we otherwise wouldn't know? Because we live in such a cosmopolitan city, uh, there are two of the biggest ports in the country. Um, we also have airplanes coming in with horticulture, nursery, type products from all around the world. We need to know where all of these snails and slugs um, that are living here now have come from. So some of them come from Hawaii, Florida, um, parts of Asia, parts of Europe, and a lot of the snails and slugs that live in Los Angeles aren't naturally or originally from here. So it's interesting to us um, who arrives here and then who survives here. So the Bioscan project is a project where we are exploring insects that live here in Los Angeles, primarily in yards and community spaces and school gardens. And it is a way for us to actually collect specimens of a lot of the insects that are flying around that are, are really small and hard to document just with uh, photographic evidence alone. We rely on the participation of community scientists because they give us access to those spaces that we wouldn't be able to do our research in otherwise. Typically when people think about studying insects, especially in an urban environment in a, in a large city, we think about the pest insects, which really makes up a really very, very minuscule percentage of all the insect life in a given area. So we think about things like termites or uh, mosquitoes and we tend to ignore all that other diversity. So we really wanted a project that was gonna focus our attention on all the insects that are out there that are beneficial, or all the insects that we don't even know about. 
because I think most people don't realize that there are new discoveries to be had, even in a large city. We tend to think that if you want to find new species, you have to go to a faraway place. But we have species that are living here that we just haven't focused our attention on. So it's really easy to actually join the LA Nature Map project in iNaturalist. You know, once you make an observation, uh, make sure you, you, if it's in the LA area, then just tag it as LA Nature Map and it will get automatically added to our data set. And once you're within this project, you can see what everybody else has been posting to the LA Nature Map. So you can explore not just birds, but other animals as well, you know, reptiles and amphibians, mammals, mollusks, all sorts of different interesting things. A great reminder is to check back in on iNaturalist. Um, it's a really great opportunity for me to interact with the community and talk more about the observations that you've uploaded. And I really look forward to those opportunities to identify your observations and delve deeper into some of the observations and the behavior maybe that we're seeing in your photos. I am incredibly grateful to members of the public who choose to contribute to the Slime Project and, and the people who contribute to sort of the community of the museum. So we're privileged to be able to do really interesting science with members of the public and that's something that I hope continues.